Thank you very much uh, for inviting us and having the opportunity to um, uh, show the view of the suppliers uh, on, on the topic. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a pleasure to uh, uh, explain uh, our view on uh, the future network car. And in the first part of, uh, of my presentation, I will uh, elaborate on autonomous driving, a topic which is very exciting for, for our sector and where we are believing that we have achieved already a lot and we will uh, accelerate in, in, in uh, the next years to come. And in the second part of, uh, of the uh, presentation, I will make the connection to the connectivity chat. First, a few words about KLEPA, um, since I believe uh, uh, it's one of the biggest industry in Europe, but also one of the most unknown or hidden industry in Europe. Simply a few uh, figures, so we are representing roughly 3,000 companies which are generating uh, 600 billion euros uh, turnover, employing 5 million people directly and indirectly, indirectly and, and the biggest investor in research and innovation here, uh, here in Europe. So coming uh, to uh, what is driving our business uh, in, in, in cars, uh, there are four big, uh, uh, big drivers. Uh, first, urbanization. So uh, still uh, the trend, uh, people moving from rural to uh, city, big city areas is going on. So it, it's expected that in uh, 2030, more than 60% of the people are living in, in, in big cities. And this will have a major impact on how we will move in the future. Then there's the global growth of the middle class, especially in the, uh, uh, in the emerging uh, countries. So this uh, uh, upcoming middle class will have additional income possibilities for consuming and uh, investments, and especially will also an have an impact on, on our business. And then comes the regulatory framework where governments are uh, going on, in fact, uh, to focus on, on three areas which are impacting the, the mobility. That's the preservation of resources, environment, compatibility, and safety. And this has an impact on the consumer behavior, the behavior of, uh, of the OMs, and also of the uh, uh, suppliers. And then it, uh, finally, it comes also the behavior changes um, of the consumers. So there will be the generation X, Y, which uh, has another focus than cars. So they are looking at connectivity. Their, uh, they, uh, for the car, is, is more a tool than, than, than an excitement. But we have also still uh, the aging uh, population, old people, we still uh, want to continue to drive a car or, or remain mobility. And also the increasing, um, uh, in, in fact, uh, eman emancipation of, uh, of the population. So that's the, uh, the pull side of, uh, of the demand of our section. There's also an, uh, an, a push side. This is coming from the technologies, disruptive technologies. And um, so here's a list I do want, uh, do not want to go into details. But there is one uh, big disruptive technology we believe will make a major change in our society and also how we do business in the future. That's auto auto autonomous driving. There is, of course, a link to cloud computing, to Internet of Things to robotics and, and many others. And I think, uh, I believe in that autonomous driving will have a major impact, uh, not only on our business, but on, on our society. And I think the next slide is showing a little bit uh, what it could mean. So this is based on an, uh, a study of uh, Morgan and Stanley published in 2013 for the uh, United States. So uh, stating that in total, uh, if every car would be driving autonomously, uh, then a total saving of $1,300 billion would be uh, achieved every year. Uh, so that represents 8% of the GDP of, of, of this country. So that's big numbers. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. But I think the key message is strong. It has an, a tremendous imp impact on, uh, on, on the society. And if you're taking even this number and extrapolating this on a global level, we will reach a number of $5,600 billion each year. It's, 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 uh, it's outstanding. And this is coming from major chapters like uh, fuel economy. So uh, already today we, uh, today we see in cars uh, technologies like uh, ACC, so uh, cruise controls, which help to, uh, to realize a fuel economy if every car would have this device. And uh, then already we could save up to 20% only by this, this measure. And then by adding traffic management solutions, etc., etc., this, uh, this could be increased clearly. The second thing is, and uh, probably the most important, is uh, the impact on, on, uh, on safety. So uh, autonomous driving, and it has been mentioned before, 
will uh, handle uh, the 90% of uh, driver failures we see today in our accidents and um, this will result in, in a big number like, like 500 billion uh, saved each year in the United States. And then uh, the, the third big chapter is in fact the improvement of productivity. So assuming if the car is driving autonomously and only 30% of this time would be used to do something uh, uh, useful, this will already lead to another 500 billion uh, dollars uh, saved each year. So in, it's, it's uh, enormous the impact and I think uh, uh, this will drive and motivate ma many of, of uh, the market players uh, to, um, to go in that direction. So coming to the technologies, what does that mean for an autonomous car? The, um, what are the technologies we need? And I think there, there are five big, big chapters sorry, uh, which, which we need uh, to, to work on. Uh, so the first one is, uh, uh, is positioning, so we need to know the position of the car and all its uh, kinematics, uh, so um, what the car is, is, is doing. Uh, so this technology is, is already there, has to, has to improve, has to, has to be, uh, become more accurate, etc. So the second big chapter is perception. So in fact, uh, when you know where we are, then you, you want to read, in fact, you the environment, uh, the infrastructure. Of, of course, you want, in fact, uh, also to uh, recognize other road users, including vo uh, vulnerable uh, road users, and uh, then making a clear distinction and um, uh, to, to be ready to take the right decisions. The big uh, third chapter is information. So, um, uh, so and there we are, we are in the connectivity area, so getting information from ou outside on top, in, in fact, what the, the car is reading uh, by, by itself. And, uh, and then at the end, uh, all this information from positioning, information, per perception, they have to be, uh, they have to be fused for the, for the main reason that each of these uh, big blocks has its advantages and disadvantages, its limits. So by fusing all this, uh, these elements, uh, you can increase the, the, the quality, so the reliability um, uh, of, uh, of the entire system. And then comes the most important, uh, the fifth chapter, that's, that's actuation. So you have, in fact, to, uh, to make pro projections of your car uh, in, in, the, in the near future, so the trajectory, in a case you, you are risking to have an accident and you have to, be, to, to go into scenarios in order to, to avoid an accident or to, to, to mitig mitigate uh, consequences. So this is even the most, uh, probably the most dif difficult uh, uh, chapter. And there's an, another element, which is not here on the slide, a sixth element, that's the drive itself. Still, he is in the car. Maybe you can call him as a passenger, but still he remains for a long time a part of the equation uh, so we need also technology, in fact, to know what is the driver doing. Is he sleeping or is he still able to take over a certain uh, responsibility in case of we need him? So we need also this, this te technologies. And then, of course, the ultimate uh, vision is that the driver is freed out of all these responsibilities. But for a long time, he will be part of, the, um, uh, of this equation. So uh, coming to these five, uh, six elements, uh, what is today feasible? So in principle, in theory, you could say, I can build up an autonomous car simply using the position and the information. But that's theory. That would, in fact, require that every car would be equipped with the communication technologies, the infrastructure would, would be ready at, uh, at 100%, and then even you would not need sensors at all. But that's, the reality is a little bit different. So uh, we are not there. And that's why we are believing uh, from, from the suppliers that the perception chapter is the most important. So we need uh, to equip the cars with uh, many s sensing uh, technologies which are uh, providing everything which uh, the infrastructure or the uh, communication devices cannot yet, uh, yet provide. <coughs> then over the future, we are believing that, uh, that step by step, the weight from the per perception is, is, uh, is going away and, and will step by step increase on, on the information side. So there are many uh, there are many hurdles uh, uh, to to come to this. Uh, I simply mentioned a few ones. So we discussed it before. So user acceptance is very important because there are some people who like it, and then and some who have uh, really uh, strange feelings about anonymous cars. Affordability. So these technologies will add costs uh, to the car. The drive intention I, I did uh, uh, did mention before. Uh, but a lot, a lot of uh, t technical um, uh, challenges are still to, to be done, but we are positive about this. But also we have to demonstrate that these cars are reliable and uh, that we are gaining the trust of the, of the, of the consumers. But also here I want to, uh, to insist to say that for the moment, 
cars are driven uh, by, by cars and totally controlled by, by, uh, by drivers. And we have to learn to accept uh, um, the world uh, and the circumstance that 90% of, uh, of the accidents are caused by drivers. It's not pleasant, but we have to accept it. So if not, we would not uh, climb into cars and are using this. Now, uh, if we are talking uh, about autonomous cars, very often people are asking me, yeah, but this is only then acceptable if the car is 100% reliable. So, and uh, my message is we are not very consistent. On one hand, today we are, we are accepting a lot of errors by human beings, but if we are going to automation, we are demanding suddenly 100% reliability. And the reality should be, should be in between, of course, going step by step to 100% uh, reliability, of, of course, but we cannot switch from, from one uh, direction radically to the other one in, in one day. It's, 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 it's not feasible and it's not technical, technical not uh, feasible today. So then we are coming to uh, the regulatory framework. It has been mentioned uh, before. So the Vienna Convention, I, I will not repeat it. Um, uh, so of course we are, uh, we are looking strongly for uh, the amendments of, of the Vienna Convention and also I want to highlight uh, the, the very important work of uh, uh, UNVP uh, 29 uh, made on, on this. So we need an efficient uh, global framework for, for this, which is also in addition uh, supporting innovation and, um, and uh, um, creating the, the public awareness and acceptance and, uh, for, for these new technologies and enabling the stepwise, uh, stepwise approach to higher levels of uh, automatic driving. There are many other chapters which have to be solved, it has been mentioned before, civil liability, even criminal law, uh, open ch uh, chapters, but also extremely important. Uh, data production is another op open chapter where we have, uh, have to make uh, uh, pr progress uh, very soon. So now coming uh, back to uh, uh, automatic driving and its impact, and now what is the, the, uh, the link uh, to, to connect it uh, uh, driving, uh, and uh, so I'm making also a difference between information and then communication and then even the, uh, a higher level of uh, cooperative uh, uh, driving on, on, on the right. <coughs> so um, while the vehicle resident uh, uh, technologies uh, targeting at cash avoidance can, can be highly beneficial, vehicle to vehicle uh, communication is an additional step, in, in fact, uh, to, uh, to improve the uh, safety of cars and to warn drivers uh, about an, an upcoming uh, uh, a danger. Um, so v V2 V equipped uh, vehicles perceive uh, threats sooner than, than sensors. They can see around the corner, they see at longer distances, they can even see, see through cars, through buildings, etc. So they open entirely new possibilities where sensors are, uh, simply have, uh, have limits. And also, I think this movement from automated driving to, uh, to all these uh, connected uh, technologies will also change our industry, the, uh, the supply industry, dramatically. M probably we will also see a little bit like in the communication industry, mobile in the, uh, phone industry, that we will uh, have a divide maybe in hardware suppliers and software uh, suppliers and, and those who are making uh, uh, the, the, the connections. So we have, we have also to, uh, to absorb this uh, major structural changes within our sectors and, and having a major impact on the jobs uh, required for the future. A few words about um, connected and uh, cooperative. So what is the difference? So uh, I try to make it even in, in, uh, quite simple. So there are many, many, many applications you can imagine and you see it with all these, these, uh, with these bubbles. There are many applications possible around uh, connected, but I would say they are mainly targeted to uh, make the life easier of, of, uh, uh, of, of the users and, and increasing their comfort. Whereas the cooperative si system, so which is not only taking information, not only communicating, but also being part of, uh, of actuators, so taking decisions, they are having an impact, in fact, on traffic flow management, but even more on safety. So what is this, uh, the current situation about uh, connectivity in, uh, in cars? So um, today the automotive connectivity is dominated by, by aftermarket uh, devices. It's a very important uh, 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 business for us. Uh, the rolling out of new infrastructure is, is expensive for, 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 for governments uh, and therefore also slow and, and incomplete. We see div uh, regional differences. Uh, they may hinder than the interoperability. And also we see uh, still today 
uh, a big disconnect between mobile and automotive uh, industry life cycles. And uh, the mobile sector brings many positive uh, elements to connected care, especially the ability to build an ongoing relationship with the customers. I think we from the car side, we have to learn for, from, from you on this side. But also what we see is the payment models for uh, how consumers pay for connected cars are not still, uh, are not still uh, developed in a satisfying way. And um, so we need, an, in fact, a new approach in a connected car how uh, the relations between the automotive manufacturers, dealers and, and, and customers are handled. Um, but also, we need also new models between uh, the operators and, and the car, car manufacturers. So the connected car will lead to new uh, models of, uh, of ownership. And um, now I'm coming uh, to uh, the objective of, of connected cars a little bit uh, as a proposal or as, as a thought uh, from the view of, uh, of, uh, of, of the suppliers. So um, the connected vehicles, they should increase uh, the, the market pen penetration with interoperable uh, communication. And uh, it has been challenging so far for automotive OEMs to generate much revenue from the connected cars uh, to date. So it's still a marginal uh, business in our area. And uh, so it remains for the OEMs, uh, and here is his challenge, in fact, by how to sell the benefits of the connectivity to dealership networks. That's where he is focusing for, for the moment. And uh, while other value chain participants are a little bit more uh, frustrated because they feel a little bit uh, excluded. And then, of course, uh, it was discussed before, uh, the big question for us is the, the, the access and the ownership uh, of the data, so in our section, it's not that clear who owns it. Uh, so uh, in, in some cases, uh, it's the system uh, providers who think they own it. The car manufacturers, they, they think they, they, they own the data because they are part of the car, but also the consumer could say, I'm, I'm owning it. So it, this is also, uh, for, 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 for me, not very clear. And then uh, the intelligent transport system is only possible if, if we achieve to have a representative quantity of, of data which is collected, linked and, 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 uh, and, and processed. Um, so that's why also uh, we, we are in fact launching the discussion how this uh, can be realized technically. So we, we think that we need certification procedures from independent uh, entities which approve that applications are safe, reliable and complying with the, the necessary security levels. And uh, also, uh, um, we are just uh, discussing now, in fact, the, the need for an open platform, which is uh, uh, more widely recognized as a part of a drive to, uh, towards increased collaboration across the entire uh, ecosystem I was describing before. So we are also uh, thinking that an open vehicle platform architecture will accelerate the market share of connected and, and communicating vehicles. So um, to summarize a little bit, uh, the connected car is no longer an option for automotive OEMs. It is a necessity. But uh, I would summarize, in, in fact, uh, the, the, the success and, and uh, and the speed how connectivity will uh, will progress in the future to a, a simple equation. So, um, if we achieve uh, to, together the entire ecosystem uh, to create a sustainable connected car business grounded on collaboration, and where sales can be generated for all the all the players throughout the value chains, I think then we are on the right track. <laughs>